I'd like to invite now Charles Taz from the uh, Clarington Museums. Thanks for being so patient with your questions. I know you must be hitching too. <laughs> How does this work? Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm from Clarington Museum. Some of you may not know where Clarington is. It's uh, just uh, east of Toronto. You may have heard of the town of Bowmanville. That's our main site. And we have another site out in the country. This is our earliest museum. It uh, was established in 1961. The house itself goes back to 1847. It's a period home. Uh, it's mainly for display. I will admit there is some storage for textiles within the, the drawers of some of the furniture in that building. We have a one-room schoolhouse. This uh, is the Clark Museum. It was established in 1970 as the uh, Clark Township, or eastern half of Clarington Museum. It has uh, functioned as that. It's functioned as a schoolhouse museum. It was also an agricultural museum for some time. They also, there's a storage building up there, and I just show you that so you're aware of it. Uh, and we're not, it's not really part of the reorg project, except that some of the items from our other storage area will be going up here. This is a separate project. <laughs> Uh, this is our new, our, too new to us, I guess, main building. This is the Sarah Jane Williams Heritage Center. This is, uh, that's the lady that established the Bowmanville Museum in 1961. And in 1965, she allowed the public library to be built in the backyard of that museum. And uh, they moved out in 2002, and we've been there since 2004. And this has become our main exhibit space, which is on the first floor there. Uh, the director's office is there, a gift shop. Uh, there's a little reception area, research area. And uh, downstairs is the curator's office, exhibit's office, and the storage area we're going to talk about. So as you uh, come through the front doors, and I put the front doors here because part of the reorg project was to look at the envelope of the building. And these doors we inherited from the library. They're automatic sliding doors, like the kind on of Star Trek. And uh, uh, they are actually, there's always a gap between these doors. And uh, we've noted that it's become uh, quite an issue with uh, terms of cold air, not just when they open, but even when they're closed, it's cold air coming down. And hence, we keep the doors to the archives and the storage area closed. So as you come in, uh, just if you come into your uh, uh, left would be the um, uh, uh, exhibit area, and then you can just see the railing down on the corner here, and that's the stairway that takes you down to the archives. Most people we serve in the research area upstairs, and then uh, I go downstairs and bring stuff up from the archives, although there is some general research material upstairs. It's a foyer that you come down. Uh, this would have been great exhibit space, although fire inspector said no, so we have to keep it open. Uh, we, we're allowed to keep a few larger items. And then as you go down the hallway, there's the doors to the uh, archives and the artifact storage area. So as you uh, come in, your, uh, immediately to your front would be the uh, processing area and offices. And then to your left is the, the uh, reorg area a project area. This is our storage area. It's a long room. It's about uh, uh, 40 feet by 30 feet. And we've inherited the library shelving. Our, our actual furniture is not too bad um, in terms of their metal shelving. They do have wood on the side. They are adjustable, although we don't have any extra shelves than what we've got, but we can adjust them to a certain degree. The big problem was we did the uh, condition report. As you can see, we're overstacked at the top. And uh, that's not only a health and safety concern, it's also a concern for the, uh, for the artifacts. We're pretty lucky in that the uh, building itself is pretty good. Uh, there's no uh, major leaks or anything. We do have a bit of moisture on the first floor, but nothing down here, but there, there are some uh, concerns. Uh, this is a workbench that we've got here. It is taking up space in the storage area. Um, the, uh, the idea is maybe to uh, reimagine this whole space. So the initial uh, map grant that we were looking at was to uh, put movable shelving in. We've kind of had to put that on hold for, for many reasons. Uh, one was uh, they discovered that the tiles were asbestos in the subfloor, and we really weren't sure if we wanted to go with a, a movable shelf system that would it might require drilling into that. There was also um, just the idea of 
there's been walls added over the years that could easily be taken out and that maybe we need to reimagine that space. That also came with a, a new director, so we're, we're looking at maybe a bigger focus than what, what we, we had when we started this process. Note also the humidifier down at the bottom. This building is heated and it is air conditioned, but we do need to uh, get the humidifiers going in the, uh, in the winter. And unfortunately, the humidity does go up quite a bit in the summer, but we're looking at getting dehumidifiers. So another view showing again, this was a little earlier view uh, with the reorg. Again, overstacked here, but also uh, stacked here and stacked on the floor by the work counter here, and you can see down the, the hallway there. This is, uh, as you go down and you look into the shelves, you can see there's stuff on the floors, there's this wire hanging down that shouldn't be there. And uh, although a lot of the items are in boxes, uh, there's a variety of boxes. Some are archival, some aren't. Some are labeled and some aren't as well. So we have uh, that to deal with. But then some aisles we have here are um, in pretty good shape. Um, this is all actually, I had a dedicated staff person uh, after the reorg started, so we did do a little initial cleanup just so we could get in there and actually do, uh, do some of the, the reorg work. Uh, note at the end of the aisle, at the top there, you'll see those plastic boxes. Those are Rubbermaid boxes. They're the opaque plastic. They are said to be the best ones you can buy. They're the most stable plastic. We use that for our doll collection. Uh, the museum has everything you'd find in a typical community museum. We've got quilts and clothes and dishes and things like that. But what's of main concern to us is we have probably the best collection of Canadian dolls in all the world. Um, and not only because museums have been collecting dolls since 1961, but the main doll collector uh, for Canada has been slowly donating her collection. And through the reorg process, even a little before, I have noticed some of the dolls, particularly the composition dolls, are starting to degrade. And that is a great concern to us because we have the history of doll making in Canada. And uh, if we lose it, there's, there's nothing else. So we want to take care of that. We also have a large group of negatives, glass and acetate. And they're not in any cold storage. They're just at room temperature. And uh, that's of a concern as well. This is another aisle here um, showing uh, stuff at the top that shouldn't be there. Inappropriate storage boxes, the wooden boxes housing newspapers. Uh, that's the way they came. And uh, showing the, uh, the, the doll boxes at the back and some other inappropriate things. Take a note at the, uh, the vent on the ceiling. There's actually quite a few vents in this room. And you know, I was aware about it, but the reorg made me really think about it. And uh, that's, uh, you're going to see quite a few slides because I became quite obsessed with these vents. Um, <laughs> We also have a large collection of pump organs. This is only a fraction. Bowmanville had the second largest piano and organ manufacturer in Canada. And uh, we've got quite a few instruments here and on display. Uh, we're at the point now, if I want to take a, one, I take a new one, I have to get rid of an old one. So we're trying to upgrade the collection that way. Although some of them have a great provenance. So we'd never get rid of those. Others, we don't know that much about. You can just see there's a fire exit at the end of our uh, area there. Now it's really just for staff, um, but it still has to be maintained, which limits our choices. And there's another one of those vents. And they're sometimes working, sometimes not. And this one here, you can see it's actually blowing straight down on organs. And I put a, it's a piece of cardboard with some tin foil on it just to deflect it because it was blowing right down on that organ for now. Uh, I, unfortunately, I have nowhere else to put these organs and uh, that's where it's going to have to stay for now. But that's definitely Part of that bigger picture we want to look at, we're also thinking of getting rid of the drop ceiling and maybe increasing the space that way. Uh, air vent on the floor, and again, there's air coming out there, and we do have a few things stored right there, um, and that's not good. We have... Um, there's an air vent again. We have... Um, in terms of our policies and procedures, they have been updated within the last few years, but we're always looking at fine-tuning, um, well, updating and fine-tuning. What we're finding with the collection is our mandate has been too broad, even though we've tried to narrow it down, uh, particularly with the dolls. I think right now we've kind of collected 
dolls in terms of what is relevant to a Canadian childhood, so a child growing up in Canada, various eras, I think we need to look and reduce it even more because uh, the, the collection is getting quite large. Oh, I want to be one of the aspects of the uh, reorg thing got us uh, concerned about the dolls, so we did invest in the hobos, these hobos here that record the temperature. I've been recording the temperature every every day, and it's been pretty stable. Temperature stable, humidity goes up in the summer, down in the winter, but uh, these hobos do it every 15 minutes, and I am surprised at the just in the last two, three weeks we've had them, the, the jumping that's happening. But what that's going to give us is more ammunition when we go to uh, actually apply for the uh, new MAP grant or actually to get funding from other sources in terms of this, um, in, in terms of this uh, room. So uh, right now what we want to do is uh, monitor that. We're also um, uh, looking at, uh, as I said, updating our policies or, or fine-tuning them. Uh, we use Pass Perfect for cataloging. We got it in 2011. We're very good about using it. Everything's been on, put on it since 2011, but it's the backlog. The backlog starting 1961 is all still paper records. It's all been accessioned. It's not been uh, cataloged within the last three, four decades, just accessioned. Uh, so what we're looking at is we've already started uh, organizing a, a program to use our, our volunteers who are mostly seniors, so a, a, a core of six, I will say, that are really uh, solid, that come in every week. Only one is comfortable on the computer. So we've devised uh, paper pages that mimic what's on Pass Perfect so that the seniors can go through the uh, files and write down the information. And we have a new group of junior volunteers that work on Thursday nights now, and we're hoping to get them to do the um, uh, data entry because they'd be more comfortable with the computer. So just to finish off, oh, sorry. Uh, this is the fire exit door. And uh, one of the things that came out in uh, our, our condition report is we don't have a fire suppression system, uh, we don't have a disaster plan, and we don't have anything to deal with flooding. We really haven't had an issue with flooding, but this door opens up to an outside staircase. And, I think, and you can see uh, this is the staircase going down here. And you can see the slope of the land is sloping that way. And uh, in Simon's uh, accounts, he was of my report, he said, from 1979 to 2009, there's been such a large increase in the moisture that's been falling in our area that that could become a concern. So that was something that wasn't even on my radar. And yet, when he mentioned that, I recalled an episode from long ago when we had a pipe break in this room. This is our furnace room that created a flood that came out to the hallway. Now, luckily, it didn't get into the, the collections room, but the collection room is just beyond that wall. So it is something that you should have been aware of. This is our processing area, so it's right next door to the uh, storage area. So we try to um, uh, work on the artifacts here. They get numbered here, uh, basically, and accessioned. Uh, there is some uh, room uh, to get this area in better shape in terms of the newspapers along the side here. There's also a wall there that divides it from the collections room, and that was added later, easily removed, and that's another thing we're looking at in terms of re reimagining this entire space. Now, I have to tell you, uh, as part of the reorg, we, we went ahead and we did some reorganization here, and that's what it looked like before. So we're on to a good start. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>